Today we will be looking at the Ringlink and the Viewer programs. The Ringlink is a magnetically coupled device that connects to the front of the indicator. It's used to transfer the setup and calibration information to a PC, download software upgrades, and also the complete setup of all the parameters within the indicator itself. The user interface is well designed, offering the ability to drill down to each of the settings within the indicator. This allows for ease of setup and the ability to save a complete setup at the completion of the programming. Calibration is also saved within the viewer program. While connected to viewer, all keyboard functions can be utilized through a mouse click. Each of the buttons can be controlled as if you were standing in front of the unit itself. Each of the settings within the indicator are represented in a menu tree. This allows you to drill down into each individual setting and make the changes as required. Prior to using the Viewer program, we need to ensure that the USB Ringlink drivers have been installed and also that the R420 Viewer program has been installed and the computer system meets the minimum requirements. Both of these downloads are available on the website. Before you begin, connect the Ringlink cable to the front of the 400 and the USB cable into the PC. Once the Ringlink cable is connected, open the 400 viewer program on the PC. You will notice a series of tabs across the top. Open, Save, Find Device, Connect, etc. You will be using the Connect button to connect to the 400. There are two types of connections, Serial and TCP. The TCP is used when the Ethernet module is attached to the 400 series. The IP address entered here is the actual IP address of the indicator. This will be covered in other series. For this series we will be looking at the serial connection. Click the serial button and you will notice there is RS232 an optical link. The RS232 allows for the DB9 or 25 pin connection to RS232 ports, typically on tower PCs. The default settings are 96, 8, none and 1 which reflect the default settings within the instrument indicator so there should be no need to change these. For this example we will be using the optical link or the Ringlink cable. Use the drop down window to select the COM port that the Ringlink is connected to, in this instance COM2. Once selected go down to the bottom of the screen and click the OK button. You will now see that the indicator is connected and displays the weight as seen on the indicator. We can load the settings of the indicator into the software by pressing the Start Session button. Once pressed, there are three levels of access to the settings. Safe Setup Menu, Full Setup Menu and Operator Menu. The Safe Setup Menu allows for changes to be made within the indicator that don't affect the metrology of the indicator. The Full Setup allows for full access to all settings, including the metrology or calibration of the indicator. And finally the Operator menu, which allows changes to settings at the operator level. Today we'll be looking at the Full Setup menu. Select Full Setup. An important thing to note is the Read Entire Menu checkbox, which is checked by default. When checked, the entire menu will be saved when saving a file. When unchecked, only single settings will be saved in any open menu tree. This is useful when wanting to deploy a single setting across multiple units. Once the OK key is pressed, the unit starts a session by reading the information from the indicator. You will notice the queries and the responses being sent to the indicator in the bottom left hand screen. Also the serial number, firmware and software version are displayed. Allow time for the read to commence and complete. Once completed, a menu tree will open up. These represent all the settings within the indicator itself. Expanding the trees will allow you to drill down into further settings. For example, the build settings, and in this instance we will go ahead and change the capacity of the unit. Clicking on the capacity of the unit opens up a user-defined window. This allows you to enter in values as required. Pressing the OK key will then confirm these. Apart from user-defined settings, there are also fixed settings within the unit, in this instance the division or increment size. These settings are accessed by a drop-down window and are predefined settings. Select what is required and the indicator will change. Again, using the decimal point, we're going to add a decimal point from a predefined list. 
Going back to the display tab, you will now notice that the increment and capacity have changed to 0.5. Using a simulator, we can run the simulator up to show this change. Returning the simulator to zero, we can now look at one of the more powerful aspects of the viewer program. The ability to change user-defined output strings via the RS-232 ports or Ethernet port in this instance. There are different output selections. In this instance, a single, but using the drop-down menu, others are available. We'll be outputting via the 3B port, which is the Ethernet port requiring the Ethernet module. We'll be sending a custom format, the gross weight, and the message we will be sending is, this is a test. In this example, the custom event auto is used. The event auto screen is a user-defined screen, and basically the information can be entered as required. The backslash C1 token is a new line token. In this example, we're going to change the T to a capital T. Hit the test button, and it is displayed as it would be seen. Configuring a custom output in this method has its obvious strengths. You can use the test window to display the message prior to sending to the unit. This is ideal for configuring lengthy output strings that would normally be done at a keyboard level. Once the setup is complete, another powerful tool is the save function. The entire setup can be saved by file name with an RIS extension. This allows the complete setup to be saved for later use and deployment across many other units or as a diagnostic tool. Once the file is saved, use the end session button to close the session and then the disconnect button to disconnect from the indicator. This now completes the RINLINK and Viewer 400 overview. This has been another Rindstrom Educational Series program. For more information please visit www.rindstrom.com or follow us on Facebook forward slash Rindstrom. Thank you.